This, this, yeah, do your thing, shit. This is actually a pleasure, man, to have you on my show, man. Really. It's actually my pleasure, and thank you very much, brother. Legendary. Um, first thing I want to ask you again is the run by me the, the legend of the Red King, or again, because when you when you my age, there was some discrepancy that the Red Kango specifically caused some animosity or difference between you and LL Cool J and shit. Could you elaborate on the history between the Red Kango and you and LL? Basically, the fans caused that animosity. <laughs> okay. Because some of them would call me LL or something like that, and it's like, yo, I gotta distinguish myself from LL. Right. Being that his I Need a Beat was out first, you know what I'm saying? Right. But it still was the dress of the day, so I adapted it at the same time as him. Okay. But now we were the only two in the music business looking like that, that were actually making records. Okay. Mikey D wore Kangos and shit like that, but Mikey D wasn't, you know, he didn't have his records out or none of that. Right. Big shout to my man Mikey D. You know, so, but to distinguish me from everybody else who wore the Kangos, the red Kangos, I wore two mismatched shoes. Right. Was there a was it a coincidence that both of y'all uh, made legendary love ballads? Did that factor into it? Listen, I made mine first. Left Me Lonely was out first, right? Okay. And it was a business decision on Russell's behalf to pay off radio stations not to play Left Me Lonely. Right. So it looked like I Need Love came out first. Okay. But it didn't work. The world already knew that Left Me Lonely was out before I Need Love. Right. So I was like really, the, I don't like saying, I was, I, usually the Bronx dudes always, the up, them uptown, they'll be, I was first, I was first. I'm just saying it, I was the first one with a, a rap love ballad with T.J. Swan singing on it. Right. You know, and you couldn't hide it from the world because that was back in the days when a hip hop song came out. Every hip hop head was at the record store going to just pick the album up, reading the, cur the yeah, credits, yeah. and looking who did it. Right. So, you couldn't make I'm Bad album make I Need Love be first before Left Me Lonely, which was on the Down By Law album. Right. So, with, uh, who was the chick that inspired Left Me Lonely? I know she was a bad motherfucker. Man. No, she wasn't. I was just young at the time. But it was definitely somebody. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't as, as ill as me putting a nine to my head. But you know, as a lyricist, you make things up. You you can make stories. It's true life, but you add things. It's like going to the movies and watching a movie. You know what I'm saying? I, some of it is real, but some of them, you know, right. names have been changed <laughs> to okay. protect the guilty party. No doubt. Um, you, you've answered this, this question a billion times. The battles with KRS-One, how do you feel to this day? Do you feel you won? I feel that we never had a battle. I can't sit here and say I won. I say he made more records than I did, and that's only because You talk I, about in terms of, you know, uh, disses or... I mean, as far as, as Longevity. Albums, longevity albums. I didn't okay. have to because I'm going to tell you why. After 1992, I didn't have to make another record. Mm -hmm. Hip hop was was not what it was. You're getting jerked by your record company. I'm still signed to Cold Chillin' for five more hold on, hours. Hold on, hold on, my man. You really got the bridge as your ringtone? That's my notification. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I'll be places right and it'll go off, and somebody will say, "I knew that was you. <laughs> I knew that was you." Right, right. But back back then. In 1992, I produced this artist called Snow and right, Former, right. which got me paid so I much. I never knew that you produced that record. I, I produced thought you that just record. hit the hook on that. No. Nope, so I how did how did you it. discover him? He was out of Canada, right? I was going to yeah, I was going to get this right on Jamaica Avenue, my man Goldfinger Studio, right. And I ran into DJ Prince, and Prince said, "Yo, I got a white guy in Canada that knows how to do reggae." I said. Yeah, all right, whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, I'll bring him down. He came down two weeks later, and the minute the snow put up his mouth, and said, and farmer, you know, said I had snow me, I could blame him. I did keep him boom down. Right. I was like, oh, hell no, we going to the studio right now. And this was at the time where I had got kicked off of uh, Warner Brothers. Why I got kicked off of Warner Brothers is not what, from what Chris is saying, because I told Benny Medina to his face he was a 
I ain't gonna say the word because they gonna ban your station. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't say that word. I'm word not listening. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I right. said to Benny Medina, you were straight bladder da 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 da. Right. You know <laughs> what I mean? And so from that point, that's how my career went the way it went. I right. was getting dropped off of record labels, cold chilling, telling me, yo, we can't pay your rent. We ain't, we can't do nothing for you, but we'll put you on prism or whatever the fuck that cold, whatever the fuck the new label was. Right. And I produced Snow, which got me paid so much that I just said, fuck hip hop, so, period. That, that went multiple platinum, right? Multiple platinum, and I could tell you a story right now. In the now. U.S. and internationally, right? U.S., international. I could tell you a story about that record right now. What's happening? If you was to go on um, YouTube right now and see Daddy Yankee, yeah. he's got a song called In Kong Kama. Uh -huh. It's been hot all year long. Right. Still plays on the radio. He took in form to make that. So you know I got a check in 2020, right? No doubt. I, and the, yo, it been on it it been on YouTube for eight months. It got one billion five hundred million streams. Right. If I only got ten cent off of that motherfucker, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I just got ten cent off of each stream, motherfucker. Straight. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's more than I started with. No doubt. Juice. But that's that. That's the story to that. But that's why, after the Chris thing, me and Chris still were doing stuff. We we would. A lot of people don't know. They think me and Chris never had shows. Right. Me and Chris used to go around the country. Mm hmm And we used to be down for each other because let's say this is early in the rap game. New York. We thought we was the shit everywhere we went. Right. So we had an attitude. And so we would come to a state like Georgia, South Carolina with our New York attitude. So it's only us here. So we got to watch ourselves from the rest of these niggas. So no we would watch our fucking self. You know what I'm saying? I actually saved Chris's life one time in Ohio. Right. Scott slapped the shit out of this girl two days before he died. The right. Two days before he got shot. We in the elevator. Scott slapped the shit out this girl. For what reason? I don't know. Right. Next morning, I wake up. I go downstairs and shorty in the lobby. And she looked at me. She said, Shan, I respect you. You gave me respect. Dug in her fucking bag and said, I'm going to kill Scott LaRock. I said, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> now, here's the part where you got a motherfucking face of whether you a fuck nigga or you a man up nigga. I could have been a fuck nigga. And went about my motherfucking business and act like I didn't see that. Right. But what I did instead, I said, yo, I went and told Ty, I said, yo, Ty, you know that little shorty, blah, blah, she got mad niggas in the parking lot. They want to kill fucking Scott. So we came up with the idea, yo, listen, since we got two buses, we going to sneak them off in your bus. And Chris could tell you the story. Right. It's not like I'm saying some shit he will not back the fuck up. Right. They, we snuck them out. On my bus. Now, I go to get out on they bus, and the chick chased us to the fucking airport. Until they didn't they didn't light the bus up for the simple fact when they looked in the bus, they said, Oh, that's shit. Right. That ain't Chris and them. Right. So they just let it ride. But they chased us all the way to the fucking airport. And two days later, Scott got killed. In my mind, I'm like, damn, did that bitch have that much motherfucking power? God damn. To come to New York and just knock him off like that? What the fuck? Right. But I don't even touch that situation. Because there's things I know about that situation that I'm not going to fucking reveal. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'd be a sucker nigga to say some shit that I know like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm right. not, I, I tell shit, but some shit you just can't be fucking rattling off. Hey, hey Shan, do you have a, a top five MCs of all time? Nope. You don't have a top five? Nope, I don't it's, have a top five. I say that everybody stands great in their own right, and this is what I'm sick of. I'm tired of black people pinning their own up against their own. You don't see motherfuckers asking Billy Ray Cyrus whether he's better than fucking uh, one of them other motherfuckers. You don't think so? Uh, nigga, not the way we do it. Not the way may, we may, do may, it. Maybe, maybe the nature of black people is to be a little bit more competitive. I know how they do it. They do it like this. They go to the finest motherfucking country club and they order the best motherfucking wine. That's how they motherfucking see who the top-notch nigga is. They don't dog each other in public. Right. They go to motherfucking name some fucked up island that we don't even know about. Right. And he got the motherfucking master suite and this nigga got the fucking regular suite. That's how they motherfucking disrespect each other. 
They don't get on the internet and say, what's your top country guy? No. We all stand great in our own right. Except for these little new niggas. I don't know what the fuck y'all be doing. But still, the originators that originated this shit, everybody stands in their own right. You can never put me and Chris in the same box. Period. Because our styles are way different. Right. I do things a little bit differently than him. Right. So a battle between me and him, he'd kill me when it comes to the stage. Right. I always tell you that. Everybody. Chris is one of the greatest motherfucking stage performers that I've seen in my life. Next to Big Daddy Kane and Dougie Fresh. No doubt. It's Big Daddy Kane, Dougie Fresh, KRS-One. Now you want to ask me who got the top three shows or five shows, my nigga? I could give you that. You give that. <laughs> I could give you that. You could give me that. With, uh... I could give you that. I seen um on the beef DVD you you hit us with a few bars as we was going out about having the doorbell with the real bitches singing the notes. You still got that same doorbell? Ah, uh -uh, I got a new one. <laughs> you got a new. They got more bitches singing. That was some of the most clever shit. I heard. I'm telling you, I got you see, I remember fun. that shit. Yeah. You see, I remember that shit. That was a long time ago. That yeah. fucked me up. Um, you still recording? I don't like the way the hip hop treats old school motherfuckers. Explain to me, because I've heard this um, from other people, from Daddy O. I heard it from Daddy O. Um, I heard it from a couple other of the elders. They say, you know, as they started to age in their career, um, media outlets didn't treat them the same, radio didn't treat them the same, opportunity didn't treat them the same. I'm trying to reverse that trend. That's why you're sitting here with me today. Thank you, bro. You brother. know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, elaborate. Well, what it is, is like, you can get one of these little mumble-ass niggas to come out here and fucking do a show for 300000 You know what I'm saying? The same venues that they're renting them out, we can get some old-school hip-hop shit going. Them old-school tours, they want to pay us, what, $2,000? Get the fuck out of here. You want me to sing my whole catalog for $2,000? Kiss my ass. I'll sing two verses and a hook, motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck out of here. You know, and, and when it comes to it, it's like we haven't made a difference. Our culture just pushes everything that pre preceded them to the side and act like it doesn't matter. And I'm not going to keep sitting here. I don't want to be, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody or anything because you have to do what you have to do to feed your kids. I just happened to luckily come up on a white guy from Canada that said I don't have to do that shit no more. No doubt. Okay? And so even now in 2020, like I tell you with that Daddy Yankee shit, I lived off of informal for the past since 92. Yeah. I ain't did shit. Look at my fucking hands. You see calluses on them nah, bitches? Hell nah. Not a motherfucking day's <laughs> work at all. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I found a way. But I don't want to be like Mel and them. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure touring is fun for them right now still. Right. Going someplace, somebody paying for it and paying you. You yeah. can't get greater than that. Right. You can't. You know so what I mean? So what's your hang up? When, when, when we gonna My get hang the, up. The MC, when we gonna get you to get them moving around again? When a nigga pay me, right? <laughs> and if you don't pay me, you better play the motherfucking song and sing it your motherfucking <laughs> self. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's what it is, man. What's your relationship like with Marley? You and Marley good today? Yep, yeah, because we're older. Yeah. Oh, y'all had, had a lapse in... Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't his fault. It was my crazy ass. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <coughs> <coughs> Fuck y'all. <coughs> Good shit. <coughs> As you see, <coughs> all right, I'm choking and I'm out smoking. Yeah. Gully TV <coughs> shit. So, I'm not going to sit back. <coughs> I'm going to say something. Because I want you to address me with that shit, nigga. Right. So I'm going to say something. So I would say fuck nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm saying this. I'm going to say it. So what? And we fell out. Right. But nowadays, we making money together. No doubt. Because the main important shit is we feed our kids, our grandkids, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So we good. Oh, like man. I said, we just did something for that AMC special that... Uh, the Roots did. Yeah. It's called Hip Hop, the songs that shook America. Yeah. Well, the bridge is on one of them episodes. How long did it take you to write that? I didn't write it. I, I jotted down a few pointers, mm -hmm. and I did it off of my head. Right. And you can tell the lyrics are there, 
but it's very spaced out, which gave yeah. me time to think Dang. of the next line. And you know, I just had Jappy Jap, Larry Lab, third, least not last. Right. A cool brother by the name of Gas. Phase Brothers made you get loose. I just did it off my head. Right. Who were the Phase Brothers? Phase Brothers, they were a DJ click out in Queens area. Okay. There's a picture that I seen on Tellin Blanco sent you. That's the um that's the gangster page on Instagram. You had the Mac, you had probably the Mac 10, and you had another hammer in your hand. Four uh, fifth. Okay, you had the four fifth, fifth in the Mac. That shit looked at gangster, the vintage gangster picture. Um, tell me where you was at in life at that time. To the to, you were at the point where you were carrying a Mac 10 with you. That was the niggas I knew, places I went. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Me being who I was, I couldn't carry shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I knew niggas that had shit like that. Right. So, bang, this is what it is. <laughs> right. And these the niggas that I fuck with. But nowadays, you know what I'm saying? That was just, that's nothing to even brag on because an idiot can fucking hold the pistol. You know, I don't right. really want to elaborate on that like that was some big old shit. I hear where you coming from. Yeah, that was a time in life where, yo, niggas was getting stuck up for shit right. or whatever. And if you didn't have niggas protecting your head back, you got robbed. That's the end of the so, story. So who, who was who was your mob? Who did you roll with? Um, I can't even tell you that one. That's, that ain't, that ain't none of nobody business with that. You know, everyone, I'll tell you what. They always seen me with one that was Uptown Boo. It was always me and one of y'all. You never see me with a click. Everywhere, ever you see me at, it was never a posse. It was always me, Mike Funky, my DJ, and Boo. 114th Street Boo. That nigga knocked five niggas out at once. I didn't need a whole bunch of niggas. And this was the time when niggas would fight. Not only would Boo be fighting, but I'd be fighting. And this is why niggas fucked with me. Right. Because simple fact, I'll call my niggas after some shit happened. <laughs> and say, yo, and these niggas is mad at me because, yo, why you ain't tell us? Because the simple fact, you being my man, this some bullshit. You doing enough over here, nigga. You don't need to be caught up in my bullshit, some bullshit that I can handle. You know what I'm saying? So you really down by law. I'm really down by law. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm no gangster, no tough guy, nigga. But I tell you what, I ain't about to let a nigga just slap me and that's going to be the fuck it. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. I don't tread on your toes, don't tread on mine. I'm, everybody think I'm just an angry motherfucker, but they don't understand. This is me. I just got a fucking ADHD problem since fucking school. I'm always fucking hype. Right. <laughs> right. What's your, um, my final question for you, Shan. Um, you've been a great guest, by the way. This Thank is you, brother. Monumental. What's your relationship with Nas, who's the face of Queensbridge Projects these days? See how you just said that? Yeah. I think it might be the face of Queensbridge, but I'm the body of it. Talk I, that shit. Y'all got to remember that I'm the QB general. I love all the fact that everybody came behind and did whatever and get the credit. But right. never forget. Right. I'm going to always be the top dog and ain't no trading places. Y'all can have that. But only with my blessings and my graces when I can't hear and can't remember names and I see faded faces. And it's going to be that way when QB is just a barren ass oasis. No disrespect, I'm just putting shit back into its perspective places hot. Because mama fed me flames on a daily basis. Constantly the weed I spark. You think I suffer brain death? I look at y'all and see myself. I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> no doubt, man. I appreciate you, man. I really appreciate you, man. Again, um, drop your social media platforms and contact information so my fans well, can keep look, up with what you're doing. I only got one that I use, and that's my Instagram, MC Shan One. Okay. MC Shan with a number one. And as long as I don't say certain words, I'll still have my account because in the past week, I've got threatened three times of not, uh, they, I say crazy, I take posts from y'all stuff. They be they, threatening me too, they threaten me. So, so I'm glad you said that so people know that it's not just happening to me and I'm not exaggerating. No, it's no exaggeration. Yeah. And it's, you'll say the same thing that... Reposted something. I reposted and it's like oh now because I did it it's a hate crime but what people don't know about me is I've been an internet terrorist for a long ass time <laughs> there were sites back in the days like blog TV right and I had a crew that we ran with Piff Mike Kaz a whole bunch of other other cats and we would just terrorize the internet. Yeah. Oh, why people don't get titty pictures and pussy pictures no more? It's because of us. 
We fucked it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And it will be as soon as I log on.